Guys, welcome back to another breakdown. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at a stage I really enjoy shooting. It sort of simulates a hunting style stage. There's a couple of valuable lessons in this one. Before we get there, I give a massive shout out to our friends over at Bat Machine for making today's video possible. For your next precision rifle action, head on over to batmachine.com or give them a ring 208-981-0300. Ask for Bruce, make sure you tell him Pete sent you. Super cool actions. Unfortunately, my rifle that's finished everything on the six dasher is stuck in the US of A, but it will be here soon. And we've got some other exciting builds planned on bats too. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the stage. Okay, quick rundown, two minutes on the clock. We've got eight target opportunities, two different targets from two different positions. So shoot two, transition to the next target, shoot two, then transition your position, double tap on that one, and then we finish off on the front one. Now there's a couple of issues I run into. It's never great when you start a stage off and you miss your first shot. Also, first stage of the day, I believe this was. So that's not a great start to the day, but just remain composed then take it from there. So let's go. So here the stage RO is giving me sort of the brief, just making sure that I understand I validate with him sort of the sequence I'm going to shoot everything in and just to make sure that we're on the same page. Now you'll notice I've got my CMH bag in my left hand just showing him where I'm going to shoot and I've got which you can't see out of frame my little favorite pint size game changer tucked away under my arm which is sort of my go-to bag. Let's pop that off to the side again. Now immediately I'm going to stop this right here. You'll see there's like a double ledge. I'm going to try zoom this for you guys in post. There's like a little ledge right here where the pointer's at. And I'm going to position my bipod just in front of those that little ledge so that I can have the rifle a little bit lower. Now I did watch other competitors go before me and this is a vital thing that you guys need to pay attention to. So when other people are shooting, you either need to be spotting for them, but when they're not actually shooting and I'm looking through my binos, I'm almost glancing away with my one eye to watch what they're doing on their rifle. Are they struggling with the position? Have they set up their bipod too low? Because you'll spot, you'll be able to spot trends that way and see, listen, most of these people can't see the targets because their bipod's too low. And if they're running a similar bipod to you, try count the number of clicks they're out on their legs so that when you get there, you don't have to struggle with that specific problem. Now in this video, I'm running an Atlas PSR bipod and that was the previous model that still had cant. And we'll chat about the cant just now and why it was necessary in this specific position to actually make use of the cant. You also notice how I'm sort of straddling, I don't know if that's the correct word, correct me in the comments, um, that rock. I'm going wide legs over the rock, sort of, I'm spreading myself out over this rock, putting as much as my body on the rock as possible and using my front support bag and basically turning this rock position into a prone position. Um, the other problem you'll notice on this stage, I'm going to shoot pretty slowly because we have two minutes and I noticed a bunch of guys losing their bras because as you can see, it's pretty much rocks everywhere and your bras just disappears. So I shot this really slowly and I made note to either watch where my pieces of brass were going or to physically catch them as they come out the action, which you guys have picked up on some other videos too. So let's go. I think the first target's like 400 and something. Okay, so slow on the bolt. Okay, so I immediately spot where I missed that shot and I'm gonna make my correction. I've caught the little piece of brass. So I'm not just racking the next one in. Impact on that shot. Okay, cool. Now I'm checking my dope, which I write on my hand, which we've spoken about. Dial up. I think this shot over here is about 700, 690 ish, if memory serves. Another impact there. Now, one thing you'll notice, even though, and this is sort of difficult with this specific position, because you're lying behind this sort of rock face here and the wind is coming over my right shoulder. Now, if you notice this piece of fainbos, which is this bush over here, is actually moving and there's not a bunch of leaves on that. So for the wind to actually be moving that, it's not not windy. So it's difficult because a big thing that I try and do is I try and take note of how I'm experiencing the wind on my clothes, on my face or whatever. And I generally try and run a little short beard and it's, I don't know, it just feels like it helps a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so engaging that one, making sure of that wind call, getting that piece of brass. And then 
I see a lot of people asking me why I've got grip tape on the front of my scope. There's a number of reasons. This is one of them. I'm just able to grab my rifle securely on the optic. Lots of people say, ah, you shouldn't really do that. It's never hurt me in this situation. So yeah, just grabbing the rifle, making sure I don't break the 180 degrees. I'm collecting my other bag that I started that stage with. Ah, I see I actually ran the solo sack as my front bag here. Interesting. Now what I'm doing here, because that next rock for me is, it's an off camber rock, so the rock is sort of at an angle like this that I need to put my bipod on, I'm gonna leave one of the bipod legs long and I'm gonna push in the other little leg so that I can still have horizontal level on my rifle and not introduce any cant into that system and having to physically tilt the rifle. So I'm gonna just make that one shorter because that relationship's not going to change much and i'm running a spike let me actually grab a spike and i can show you guys what that looks like on the bipod feet okay so these are the spikes we actually manufacture here in south africa and they work great they click into atlases and into sky pods and they really give you that ability to grip a rock or concrete or whatever you are shooting off anyway so that helps me a little bit here I'm gonna now use the bigger bag to build rear support for me and I've also gone sort of into a semi crouch sitting on this one knee of mine and you'll notice I'm running pants with reinforced knees. Now this helps a lot with stages like this because then you don't have to go like ooh, ow, ee, ooh. You're not worried about injuring yourself or anything like that or hurting your knees. You can basically just go into that position and get on with the task instead of having to worry too much about where you're placing your your limbs um, right so I'm engaging the target at the back we've spoken about this dope management thing really the distance really doesn't matter in this case because we've just engaged it so I'm gonna leave my scope set for that put two rounds on that guy well I think we we drop another shot here um, yeah that was a miss okay and I lose that piece of brass but I'm seeing it rolled into that crack so I can retrieve it just now and then let me jump back a little bit here. Um, I actually have a problem with my action here with feeding that round. Let's just sort of watch this shot again. Notice how, by the way, as we speak about this, how slow I am on that trigger and how we keep that trigger pushed back, make sure we have a great follow through. So that, so what actually happened there, just on the follow through, so that when we spot that hit where it lands, we know if we make that correction and the conditions are the same, it's gonna be good information. Whereas if I'm slapping that trigger, then you might not know, your, your information you're getting downrange might not be as valuable. And I think what I'm doing there is I extracted, I ran the action back, but I didn't run it far enough back, and I sort of short stroked it and I caused the feeding problem. Now, instead of trying to just figure it out, I'd simply break my position off and I look into the action so I can see, oh, okay, this is the problem we're experiencing here and I can fix that as efficiently as possible. Okay, close the bolt and we're gonna re-engage that target at the back. Okay, so we got another impact there. So, so far we've dropped two out of eight, not good. RO gives me, I think, 30 seconds right there. Uh, I need to find my target. Now, this is where we spoke about the, having the ability to pan in the bipod. Now, this was pre-skypod for myself, um, but having those spikes planted into their position, I know my rifle is super firm. It's not going anywhere, so I'm sort of simulating that height difference with these two. And I'm able to just tilt that bipod over um, in order to engage this other target instead of having to lift up and re and move my whole rifle It was way more sort of smooth doing it this way Okay, so again, I'm having a feeding issue here I pull my mag out slightly try and figure out what's going on there now I'm panicking a little bit because initially I started off this stage because it's two minutes for eight rounds from two positions So I'm starting off really slowly. I'm walking in between the positions that I want to jack the heart rate up There's no need to rush and then at the end here, the RO says, okay, 30 seconds, I have another feeding issue, and now all of a sudden, things are starting to pick up, and I'm having to hustle a little bit more to make these last two count. Now, keep in mind, I already missed the first shot on this stage, on this specific target we're re-engaging now, so uh, I really had to make these two count to ensure a six out of eight. So, let's see how this went. Can't find the target really, so I just quickly look up, boom. I think the target's over here somewhere. 
And then we were able to put two rounds on that last target and we managed to retrieve all our brass. Let me stop this quickly for us and then we can sort of summarize everything that happened there. So yeah, we were able to put two rounds on the target at the end there in quite a quick succession. And really there, I wasn't worried too much about where that last piece of brass or the second to last piece of brass was because I really just wanted to bank those points. But to sort of remain composed while under pressure, not worry too much about that very first shot missing, first stage of the match. Because basically my mindset for this kind of stuff, let me, that has turned very bright, let me do that. Um, my mindset when I shoot any stage is every shot is my first shot and it doesn't matter if I miss the last one I want to execute as if it was my another first shot because then you I follow my shot process the whole time process 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 whatever um, I follow that meticulously and I'm enabling myself I'm giving myself the best possible opportunity of getting another round successfully down range if i miss as a result of a win call and that's really the only reason i want to be missing i want to eliminate mental mistakes and remaining calm is one of the easiest ways to because those mental mistakes can cost you matches i've seen that plenty of times so remaining calm one round at a time and that's really how i tackle a precision rifle match Guys, I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, please remember to leave a comment. Let me know what you learned or some of your tips for shooting positions like that. If you want to shop for your next precision rifle action, remember batmachine.com or 208-981-0300. I want to thank Batmachine from the bottom of my heart for making these videos possible. I really enjoy them. And hopefully next time we do a video like this, we will have a little bit of a different setting, which I'm really excited to share with you guys because we are making some major upgrades to the studio space. Guys, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.